And Kentucky Jeffrey's dominant leader team to a victory? And will the slam dunk be enough against the Missouri Tigers? Oh man, good thing those two are wearing face masks. See you sports night right now. Welcome to this week's edition of Sports Mag. Right now we have some breaking news. We're just going to jump right into it. Friday morning, Dan Hawkins suspended Marcus Simmons indefinitely for violating team rules. Last year, the wide receiver had 43 receptions for 575 yards. Athletic Director Mike Brown approves the suspension. All right, so the CU men's club hockey team has been dominating this season. Um, they're holding on to the top spot in their division right now. Let's jump right into those highlights. <laughs> The CU Men's Club hockey team took the ice against CSU last Saturday at the CU Rec Center. The Buffs came out really strong, Andrew Gillis scoring his first goal to tie the game up 1-1. One one. Uh, but CSU would come back with a vengeance, beating Latinsky off a fast break from the blue line. There was a big check into the boards right here from the Buffs. Uh, they tried to get the puck back on, on this play, but the Buffs managed to score off this faceoff. It's pretty incredible, Leslie. Kevin Latinsky here looking more like a brick wall, notching yet another save. He'd have 40 in the game. No wonder those hockey players don't have any teeth. Back to the game. A.J. Howe with the assist and Dale Dimebuck taps in the puck for the score, tying the game at five apiece. And freshman David Starr fires one to top shelf, which would prove to be the game winner. Buffs go on to win 7-5 and remain number one in the West region, guaranteeing the top seed in national. So... As you can see, the Buffs took this game. They're still at the top of their division. Uh, Kevin Latinsky with 40 saves. Pretty impressive. Absolutely. The CU women's basketball team experienced a bear attack last Saturday against oh Baylor, my. losing 76-42. to The Buffs were intimidated by Baylor freshman Brittany Griner, who finished with 24 points and 10 rebounds. Colorado scored early on and led 10-9 with 14 minutes left in the first half, but then they lost control of the Bears and trailed for the remainder of the game. Leading scores for the Buffs included Courtney Dunn, Brittany Spears, Chucky Jeffrey, but none achieved double figures. This Saturday, they faced Oklahoma away, another tough Big 12 competitor. You know, Heather, it's never fun for the Buffs when the Texas Longhorns have to come to town, whether it's football, no. volleyball, and this week we learned it's no exception for women's basketball. Yeah, let's, let's check out the uh, highlights from that game. So, the Buffs took the court against the Longhorns, as we mentioned earlier. Chucky Jeffrey led the Buffs when the Longhorns came to town. Um, so here's a look at the turnovers. This game was completely characterized by turnovers. We have a little montage for you right here. Um, that was uh, Bianca Smith getting rid of it. And here's uh, Chucky Jeffrey. Um, the Buffs were just really frustrated on the night as a whole. And here is uh, Chucky Jeffrey one more time. Bernie Spears holding the ball. Um, this, is, this is that last turnover we're going to show you. That's and, ugly. Yeah, unfortunately for the Buffs. So, Chucky Jeffrey it. responds here with that steal. And then the Buffs. So McConnell Miller, she's just trying to get the team back on track. Chucky Jeffrey responds with a steal from Kristen Nash, taking it coast to coast and makes the layup. The Buffs seem to be on a roll as Kelly Joe Malini battles Texas's D and makes a long three from the top of the key. Looking nice. We can see the skip at their sight, and I can imagine so with the CU Express dancers. Ooh, look at that hair flip. Back to action. Chucky Jeffrey drives the lane and whammy. Next up, Alyssa Fresley drives the basket but fails to make that basket. Texas gets the rebound, but Presley steals the ball back and is working it double time here before she passes it off to Chelsea Dale in the corner, where she adds three points for the Buffs. The Longhorns just rubbing the score in the Buffs' face now with this backwards hook shot off the top of the backboard. Bet you couldn't do that. Final score, Texas 74, Colorado 50. And Ashley Fontenet was probably the, um, the star for Texas with 13 points. Chucky Jeffrey leading the way with a respectable 12. Let's hear what uh, Kathy McConnell Miller had to say after the game. Hustled them. They were extremely physical. We didn't respond well to that. 
and did not get off to a good start. Um, they got some deflections, they got quick steals, led to layups, and I think it rattled our guards. Chucky's the only one that averaged in double figures. We didn't just don't have some go-to players, and you know that that's a struggle for us right now. We just we just don't have any consistent scoring. I mean, 50 points is not going to win many bigs in the, many games in the Big 12. That was a tough game, but coming up after the break, we can finally put those Daryl Scott rumors to rest. And a week after sending number one ranked Kansas in overtime, the Buffs tried their luck against Missouri. Don't go away. So uh, the men's basketball team had a great performance against Kansas, um, putting them into overtime. They're ranked number one. But uh, I guess this week wasn't, wasn't as great as we hoped it would be. Oh, man. I, I was hoping that was a nightmare. Unfortunately, it wasn't. <laughs> well, I guess we'll have to watch those highlights. <laughs> it was black and gold versus the black and gold with the Missouri Tigers coming down. Corey Higgins to Alex Burke, who nails the dunk. And number 21, Lawrence Bowers, passes it under the net, and he takes it to the house. Steve Moore battling the few defenders, but he struggles to get it in, so Keith Ramsey to the rescue, he gets the job done. And this right here shows why Alex Burks is such a player. Crossover dribble, so the jump shot three, sinks it, another three points for the ball. Nice. This time Steve Moore doesn't need any help, he sinks the layup all by himself. And Michael Dixon Jr., he puts up a crazy hook shot floater, another two points for the Tigers. Finally, some good news for the Buffs. Corey Higgins takes it to the lane and lays one in there. So, so there's some pandemonium under the basket. Who's going to get it but Zaire Taylor? He snags it from the outside and sends it in to Marcus Demon for that three. Ooh, hey, Tigers, the Buffs can shoot threes, too. Nate Tomlinson drains it from the baseline. But the Buffs' defense was looking a little shoddy, allowing this over-the-top easy pass to Justin Stafford, who makes that easy, easy basket. Marcus Relford from the top of the key passes to Higgins, who dunks it. And the Tigers actually took a break from the game right here to let the Buffs play the Harlem Globetrotters. I'm just kidding. That was a <laughs> sweet alley <laughs> Dwight Thorne sneaks the pass to Higgins, who sinks a baseline jumper. And Missouri will put the final nail in the coffin with this dunk. And Missouri, they end up taking this game 84-66. to 66. Pretty disappointing game for the Buffs as, you know, they had such a great performance against Kansas. But yeah. Losing by over 20 points, that's pretty rough. Well, let's hear um, what Coach had to say after the game. I, I don't know if it's an emotional hangover. I, I, I think maybe we got comfortable. I, I think we thought, well, we're at home, you know, and, and we've, it's been pretty good for us at home, and so it'll just be okay. And even when we got down early, I think our guys were like, well, you know, it'll be okay. And, and that's where I give Missouri credit. And, you know, today's a day that, you know, we've got to reevaluate ourselves. We, we've got to look in the mirror and, and be able to do that and know what do I got to do to help us get better. Errol Scott's complicated history at CU has taken another unexpected turn. Reports on Monday said Scott met with Coach Dan Hawkins about possibly coming back to the program. Scott countered those claims on Tuesday, calling the report a lie and reiterating that he has no plans on coming back to Boulder. If Scott does decide to return to the team, Coach Hawkins would have to approve it, and he would be ineligible to, to participate in spring practices because he's not even enrolled in any classes at CU. How would you like to see USC Trojans play your Colorado Buffaloes at Folsom Field? Think the idea is unlikely? Think again. Rumors have surfaced that the Buffs may be joining the Pacific 10 Conference in the near future. Conferences around the nation are trying to boost television ratings, playoff money, and the number of fans who follow them. If the Pac-10 were to expand, now would be the time because their television contracts expire in one year. As of now, the move from the Big 12 is purely speculation as no officials from the conference or CU have commented. Colorado coach Dan Hawkins has a lot on his mind these days, but he now has one less thing to worry about as he had filled the coaching vacancy at the wide receiver position. Hawkins got a familiar face back in the form of Robert Prince, who served as an assistant coach under Hawk as Bo at, at Boise State from 2001 to 2003. Since then, Prince has made several stops in the NFL, coaching wideouts in Atlanta, Jacksonville, and most recently Seattle. Price will be expected to coax a lot of production out of a talented group of receivers, led by senior Scotty McKnight. CU skiing icon and legend Jimmy Hugo died Monday at Boulder. Community Hospital, after a 40-year battle with multiple sclerosis, Hugo passes away 
46 years to the day he won the first two medals in the United States men's Olympic ski team history. In 1964, Jimmy Hugan made U.S. ski racing history when he took home the first men's Olympic gold medal. 20 years later, Huga founded the Jimmy Huga Center to help MS patients reanimate through exercise. He continued to sit, ski, and ride. His hands cycled until the last years of his life. The Winter Olympics are starting, and with distinguished alumni like Jimmy Huga, it might leave you wondering just how many CU alumni have made it to the Olympics for skiing. And that just happens to be our trivia question this week. Think it over, and we'll have the answer later in the show. Stay tuned, our double team will be take, talking women's basketball and a look into one of our freshman women basketball players. We have Andrew McDonald and um, Rose Heapy on our double team set. Take it away, guys. Welcome to Double Team. I'm Rose Heapy, sitting alongside Andy McDowell. And, well, we think on Double Team, the men's basketball team has been getting a little too much love lately. So we thought we'd mix it up and talk about the women's basketball team. So what happened this week on Wednesday? You're right. We played Texas, number 14 in the nation, at the Coors Event Center this last week and unfortunately lost 74-50. to That puts the record at 12-10 and overall and 2-7 and in conference. There are many factors that went into this, the loss, and one being the slow start. We started out 14-0 to and caused by... Three missed shots and four turnovers. Coach McConnell Miller said she was disappointed with the effort. She said the Buffs were, quote, out hustled and out physical, which hindered, which hindered them from scoring and ultimately staying with the Longhorns. There are other statistical factors that that were in play, like turnovers, turnovers, and more turnovers. Exactly. Turnovers pretty much ruled the game for CU. They had 22 turnovers, and Texas only had 11. I mean, and on the CU turnovers, Texas outscored 39 to 12. And, I mean, 39 points out of the 74, I mean, that's almost half the points right there. I mean, so that just pretty much shows you that's pretty much the game. And then the assist-wise, UT had 13 assists to CU's only six. I mean, they're just not getting into the paint for CU. You're right. Not getting in the paint was a big thing. They, they were outscored 44-24 to 24 in the lane. And not getting in the paint, they had to jack up threes. They shot 13 threes in the first half and only made three. That's 23%. Not getting into the lane is a fundamental of basketball, and that's not translating to getting into the free throw line. Exactly. And Texas, they had 23 free throws, and CU only shot seven and had none in the first half. And CU has been pretty good lately on free throws, but, I mean, they just didn't have a chance to get to the line. So what would you say this game was mostly like? Overall, I'd say it's a tale of two halves. Texas outscored the Buffs. 41-21 to 21 in the first half. That's a 21-point margin going to intermission, and you can't really make that up. They did stick with them in the second half, being outscored only by, th by four, excuse me, 33-29, to 29, and that was only really during garbage time. But let's say Texas is really good. Mm -hmm. I mean, they don't call it the Big Bad Big 12 for no reason. I mean, Texas is ranked 14th in the nation, but when it comes to the Big 12, they're really in the middle of the road. I mean, who else is ranked? That's right. There's seven teams in the top 20 in the Big 12. That's more than half. This Saturday, we play Oklahoma, who's 12th in the nation, and on the road in Norman. And they're 9-1 and one at, and one at home. Then on Tuesday, we have Kansas, who is two, two games ahead of us in conference, and we already lost to them in Lawrence by 11. Then next Saturday, we have to go to Lincoln to play Nebraska, number four in the nation, who's 22-0 and 9-0 and and in conference. But really, we need to get back to what we're doing ourselves. Exactly. We need to get back to the individuals and work on the foundation that we have as a team. And so, I mean, we have Brittany Spears, who's averaging 12 in conference and almost 17 overall. But that really didn't show up too much in this game. I mean, she's only scored five points and had only three rebounds. You can't really win if your your best player isn't producing. I mean, you gotta have gotta have the players that the big points. You gotta have the big game right there. And also, yeah. also, Bian senior Bianca Smith, she's. She's a force off the bench. She's the sixth man. She's second in the conference with 13 points per game off the bench. She leads the Big 12 and three-pointers made in 60, with 60, but she only went one for seven from beyond the arc against Texas. Also, Whitney Houston, who's a junior, she didn't play against Texas for personal reasons, and we don't know when she's going to be back. But these veterans, although they're not playing well, they give chances for the freshmen and sophomores. Exactly. You don't. You may not have the, the veteran leadership, but I mean, you got the younger players stepping up, and they're getting those much needed minutes, and they're really invaluable to to like to the future right down the road. I mean, especially Chucky Jeffrey. She's been really consistent lately, averaging 11 points in conference, and she's been sharing the rock with a little over three assists per game. So that's pretty yeah. good. Another freshman I want to talk about is the Malcolm Peck sisters, especially Megan. She's playing beyond years. Although she isn't filling up the stat sheets, she's doing the little things that get it done and help the team win. Another name you haven't heard of yet is Miss Melissa McFarland. She didn't get much playing time early in the year, but against Texas, she went for 22 minutes, and she had some big minutes against T Baylor, 
with the best center in the country in Brittany Griner, who is 6'8", and she likes to dunk. Also, sophomore Alyssa Freshly played one of her best games of the year, scored 11 points when her average is only 7. These uh, names will be here to, for a long time. But you know what? Right now, right here and right now is what we got to do. Yeah. So looking forward, the Buffs are going to Norman on Saturday. So if they're looking to get a little love a day early on the road against number 12 ranked the Sooners. Now, Oklahoma did just beat uh, the, Baylor, the Baylor Bears, who are 11 ranked in overtime, 62 to 60. But, you know, uh, Oklahoma also has five players averaging in double figures. So it's going to be pretty tough to slow them down. You're right. There's five players, so, but you can't slow them all down. Two players we want to focus on are Amanda Thompson, who's averaging a double-double, 17 and 10 a game, and Danielle Robinson at the point, who's averaging 11, and she's dishing the rock. And we're only one on five in the one and five on the road, and that's really important. Exactly. So we just got to get down to it and play the game we're capable of. Well, that's all we have for double team, and we'll throw it back to the desk. With young blood coming in, in each season, it's good to get to know your players. This week, we met with freshman forward Melissa McFarlane on the women's basketball team. Yeah, what drew you to the uh, CU women's basketball team? Um, the coaches, especially his family from home, and the team chemistry, especially. I mean, when I came here, I mean, I adapted with them really well right away. We all get along really well. I mean, they're basically all my sisters, and I feel like I'm very protective of them, so... <laughs> And uh, last week's loss against Nebraska, did that uh, hit home for you a little more since you have done that? I mean, it did. I know every one of them very well. But, I mean, next time when we play them, I know how to play them and how we can stop them. So I think we're going to come out strong when we play them again next time and hopefully beat them. We, we all know each other's flaws and we all know each other's like strengths. So we play together knowing those things. And, and uh, what do you think you uh, and your team can bring to the next Nebraska game next week? Uh, maybe different. Uh, defense. I mean, I think we need to stop Kelsey Griffin, who's their post player, who's averaging like 20 points a game, and Yvonne Turner, who's just really fast. And we have all the talent on the team. We just need to believe we have it. And uh, is your family going to the game? Yes, there's going to be like, probably be like 25 people. All my friends go there, so there'll so, be like a lot of people there. So who will your uh, parents be rooting for? Well, I don't know. My dad played for Nebraska, but I know he'll vote for CU. Hope, I know he will, otherwise I'll be really proud of him. So... The CU women's golfers were in California this week for the Northrop and Grumman um, Regional Challenge, and the event was rough, to say the least. Uh, bad weather during the first two days contributed to difficult play for the entire tournament, but um, that was not enough to slow down one buff. Senior Christine Kim tied for 21st overall after an even par 71 on the final day of play. Despite the solid outing from Kim, the rest of the team could not catch any breaks and struggled to finish 14th overall. The Buffs will have a month to work on their swings uh, before they head back west to San Jose for the Julie Inkster Spartan Invitational on March 8th. Last weekend, Buffs track and field headed south to the New Mexico Classic. Events were split up on Friday and Saturday with junior Alex Von Hagen leading CU with a fifth place finish in the heptathlon. With the third best score in CU's history, Alex Salzman followed him with seventh place but took top honors in the 1,000 meter run. On the women's side, Katie Clark led the female throwers with 12th in shot put and 15th in weight throw. Currently this weekend, the team is split in half with some traveling to Iowa for the ISU Classic and the rest competing at the Air Force Invitational in Colorado Springs. CU Women's Tennis achieved its first ever victory against number 65 ranked BYU last Saturday in Provo, Utah. The day was off to a rocky start for the Buffs when they dropped the doubles point, but they came stampeding back. Seniors Camilla Balassi and Melissa Esposito helped even the score with their singles wins. Then freshman Erin Sanders claimed her first career singles match, allowing Colorado to take the lead 4-3. to three. The Buffs became 3-2 and two overall and then traveled to Idaho to take on Boise State. Despite their comeback win against BYU, the tennis team failed to maintain their momentum against Boise State last Sunday. The 38th-ranked Broncos came out on fire, starting the match off with a 4-0 lead, and the Buffs could not catch up from there. Seniors Camilla Balassi and Monica Maluski scored both of the points for CU in their singles matches. Maluski's singles win gives her 78 for her career, good enough for eighth on the school's all-time wins list. She also managed a doubles win, putting her in with a tie for, with Jessica Garrow for second all-time. Next up is 78th-ranked Oregon, who the Buffs will take on in Albuquerque this Saturday. University of Colorado junior alpine ski racer Katie Hartman won the Giant Palm event at the New Mexico Invitational last weekend. Hartman's first place finish was CU's first individual win of the winter as she smoked the field, winning the race by over a second and a half. 
This was her second collegiate victory, her first since claiming the GS at the same venue two seasons ago. Hartman's speed on the slopes makes her this week's CU Sports Mag Athlete of the Week. So next up, we'll reveal the trivia answer and look into next week's weather with an Olympic forecast. People had everyone on the edge of their seats, and Michelle Totib talked to students to see what they had to say about the big game for this week's Man on the Street. The Colts. The Colts. Because I wanted the Saints to win. I'm here at CU's rec center seeing what students thought of last weekend's Super Bowl. It was an awesome battle between Peyton Manning and Drew Brees and some great commercials in between. Let's see what students had to say. But overall, it was a really good game. I like, you know, it's good to see when it's a close game and when teams are, uh, you know, pretty compatible and pretty well matched. So it was a, it was a good showing. Yeah, it was a really good game. Went all the way down to the end. So that was exciting. If there was a team... Uh, that I actually liked playing in Super Bowl, I would have watched it, but I didn't, and I worked instead. Just yeah. kind of all of the Bud Light and Budweiser commercials I thought were good. A little disappointed by the commercials. Uh, I think it's been named the most controversial, the uh, David Letterman, Jay Leno, and Oprah commercial. I think it was pretty hysterical having them all three there. <laughs> I mean, I felt Peyton Manning could have done much better considering how well he did in the beginning of the season. I think he put up a great performance. I mean, he threw for over 300 yards, one interception. I was returning for a touchdown, unfortunately. It kind of sucks that he threw those, well, the, the one interception at the end. You know, it would have been cool to see them come back. The Drew Brees, I think, definitely deserved it. He put up an amazing performance, some good numbers, high Super Bowl record. Can't really beat that. Who's Drew Brees? <laughs> Yeah, that's what I have to say, too. Um, I just kind of, after Katrina and everything, I thought it was like kind of cool. Like Especially, I think New Orleans kind of needed it. Sounds like most of the students were really happy with the outcome of last weekend's Super Bowl. Mixed in with a lot of those really great commercials. Hopefully we'll get a lot of those reactions for next year's game. I'm Michelle Toteeb, and this is CU Sports Bag. You've been waiting so patiently for the answer to our trivia question. And the time has finally come just to remind you how many CU alumni have gone to the Olympics for skiing. And the answer is four, <laughs> including Jimmy Huga, Billy Kidd in 1964, Spider Savick in 1968, and Jeremy Bloom in 2002. I didn't know that. That's a pretty neat fun fact that about the fun one. Yeah, especially with the Olympics coming up I right know. now. Oh, yeah, exciting. Um, so actually, next up, we are going to take a look at our uh, weather forecast for the weekend with Christine Corrado. I think she may even have a little special Olympic glimpse of a forecast coming up. Hey, guys, so we're just going to jump right into the weather. Um, we had a pretty crazy week this week. We had a blizzard. Uh, so um, we, we're going to have a cold front moving into Colorado. Um, so it's going to be probably in the mid-40s, I would say. So definitely get your jacket on or go out and snowboard. It's going to be pretty sunny as well, so that's going to be good. So uh, Friday is going to be a high of 46. It's going to be um, kind of cloudy, kind of sunny. Um, Saturday is going to be about the same, high of 45. And then Sunday we're going to have a few snow showers. So you should definitely just get out there, go snowboarding, go skiing. Um, build a snowman. Uh, Breckenridge is going to be uh, about 50% chance of snow. I'm actually going to Breckenridge. I'm going to go snowboarding, so I'm really excited about that. Um, there's going to be some packed powder, so that's pretty good for snowboarding and skiing. And we have almost all the trails open, 153 out of 155, so that's really exciting as well. And then uh, we're also going to be looking at Keystone. Um, we have a bunch of the trails open at Keystone as well. There's going to be snow there in Keystone, too. Um, so that's exciting as well. Um, we have zero inches at the base depth. Um, and, yeah, Keystone is going to be good. At Whistler Mountain in British Columbia, that's actually where the Olympics are, Olympics are be, uh, being taken place. Um, actually, on Thursday, they had a delay because of snow and fog, so they couldn't start their training. But hopefully today is going to be... Friday's going to be a good day for them to practice, um, so the Winter Olympics is going to be fun to watch. And um, so I hope you guys have fun. If you're watching the Olympics or snowboarding, have a great time. Thanks so much, Christina. It sounds like there's going to be some crazy weather going on in Vancouver. Yeah, there is. Yeah, it was. Um, the practice was actually postponed, so the women's downhill was. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. The women's downhill was supposed to go off today, and they couldn't get it done from the crazy fog up there, I guess. That's right. Oh. Which means, um, you know, the top Olympic skier, favorite for the most medals, Lindsay Vaughn. That's right. She's been kind of anxiously waiting to see how her, how her shin can do with that injury, and having that training run canceled again doesn't help. You know, nobody knows how she's going to do 
when the race has finally come. So yeah, I mean personally, I'm just I'm so excited to see downhill. Um, so excited to see the rest of the events going on um, in the next few weeks. So anyway, that's all the time we have for CU Sports Mag this week. Thanks so much for watching. Leslie Fox, Heather Morva, and Christine Carrado. We'll see you next time.